Hello everyone. Um, in today's session, we're going to demystify Flickr. Uh, we're going to introduce the Flickr test. Why do we need to do a Flickr test? Okay, and uh, give you some uh, demonstration to see some of the smart control of uh, modern products and how they meet the Flickr requirement. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use a very simple example here. This simplified system diagram can represent the circuit of your oven in the house or a hair straightener, okay? And as you can imagine, for an oven, you often need a fan, okay? So that is driven by the motor drive circuit. But the most important circuit, of course, is the heater element. And we can represent the heater element simply by a resistor, but sometimes, you know, you all, they always come with a little bit of inductance as well. But for this uh, discussion, we can treat the heater element simply as a resistor. Okay, so you know most of these products they need precise temperature control, and if you don't do that, your competitor will claim you know plus minus one degree. So in order to control the temperature precisely, you need to apply some fancy control mechanism. And the simplest way is to use a switching device, and often this one is a device called a triac. Okay, that can switch on the AC mains lines. And you can imagine if you switch this device on, there will be a large amount of current going through this uh, heater element, therefore heating up the element, and you switch it off, then the temperature starts to drop. And then basically, you use the uh, temperature constant of the heater and achieve certain uh, degree in your product. Okay, sounds easy, right? But remember, every time you draw currents from the mains network, inevitably, this current will cause a voltage drop on the mains network as well, right? Because every mains network has its own impedance. So there will be a voltage drop across this. And because you are controlling this switching device, okay, here, on and off all the time, therefore the voltage in this mains uh, network is not really stable. It's going to have uh, sometimes more voltage and low, uh, smaller voltage, more voltage, less voltage, okay? Therefore, if you have a light bulb that is connected to the same mains network, what are you going to expect? Well, that's the light bulb will become, uh, you know, uh, dimmer and brighter, dimmer, brighter, and that is what we call flicker or flashing of a light, really, okay? So the purpose of having a flicker test really is to test products that is connected to the mains, right? And to make sure that you don't cause this flicker issue because it's really annoying, right? And think about it, okay? So yeah, that's the purpose of having a flicker test. And the control methods we just introduced, right? is often called mains zero crossing uh, switching. And why is that, right? I, I can simply explain here, right? In order to have a better control of your heater, you may wonder, why can't we just use, for example, a phase angle control, okay? So the phase angle control is where you have the mains, again, in this case, and rather than switching um, at here, you probably wanted to switch at a, a, an angle, right? okay? So by switching a fixed angle, then you can really control the energy going to the heater element, therefore better temperature control. But the biggest problem with a phase angle control is that you can imagine this is a, let's say, in the EU 230 VAC RMS, okay? So when you switch on, let's say, this point, you're going to have a big voltage right, every time you switch. So that's the delta V over delta T, and we all know that is really, really bad for controlling EMI. For that reason, many manufacturers would not choose to do the phase angle control, but rather choosing the so-called mains zero cross control, okay? So every time when the mains voltage cross zero, they switch on the heater, right? And that's it. But of course, by having this control, you don't have the precise uh, uh, control over the energy, therefore you can only do it by switching on and off, having certain pattern. So now the pattern becomes really important to pass or fail the flicker test. Okay, so this is the theory. Now let's have a look at two products that use this fancy heater element control method to achieve the temperature control and also in the same time pass flicker test. The mains powered uh, product plug into this uh, uh, extension lead where we can actually measure the live current by using current probe and also the 
uh, means voltage using a differential uh, high voltage probe, okay? So you can see currently we don't have any current but just the voltage, okay? You can also see that the voltage from this, um, you know, environment, this mains network is not sinusoidal, right? You've got some harmonics already on the voltage waveform, okay? So uh, the, our first product is a um, uh, straightener, hair straightener, okay? And uh, we're going to switch on and we have a look at how they switch their heater. Okay, so I switch on the heater, okay? You can already see the, the current start to draw and you see they have some patterns there. So if I do that, okay, you see? They have diff interesting patterns, isn't it? Okay, so in this case, you do this and then they do this. Basically, they regulate the heater, okay? But they are using a very smart way of controlling the heater. Therefore, you give the temperature, but also this pattern, I'm sure when they test it in the EMC lab, this would also pass um, the flicker test, as we said, okay? So yeah, you can see now the, the temperature is heated up, therefore they don't need too much uh, current going to the heater, so they start to regulate by using a low duty ratio, okay? And also interesting, if I just uh, stopped, you can see that they always use the half wave uh, control, okay? So that means um, every time they're only switching half, okay, half of the, uh, uh, the main uh, uh, pattern cycle, and then the other half is just uh, empty, so this is a half wave control in a sense, okay, to control the heater. So now we switch uh, to another product, which is a hair dryer, okay, let's see how they control their heater. So I switch on, okay, so you can see there, so if I stop here, for example, okay, I switch off the product because it's quite noisy. Again, you can see, compared to the uh, straightener, this one actually has a different heater control, okay? So when the heater is switched on, you can see that's basically the, uh, the blue uh, trace, okay, so if I now just uh, basically um, disable trace 1, that's probably better, yeah. So you can see this is definitely not half cycle control compared with the first product, okay, so this is a full cycle control. But then you can see now they switched off and switch on, off, on, off using another pattern. And you may wonder why during the switch off there's still some current going through here, okay, so for example like here. And that is because this is a uh, products that uh, while the heater is switched on and off, the motor is always on, okay? So this uh, small uh, current indicates the motor is still on but no heater. But yeah, this you can see, th th this is how they control their heater. They have off, on, off, on, and here you can see they have off, off, on, off. Yeah, very smart uh, controlling pattern to meet the flicker requirements of the standards. Okay, so that's it. Really, I hope this one uh, basically demystify why do we need to do a flicker test and you know what type of products does it apply and uh, hopefully you enjoy this uh, episode. All right, bye bye.